What we have here are four hatchbacks. And what they are good at is feeding the urban commuter's need for hassle-free commuting. And each of these hatchbacks shows automatic gearboxes in a better light. And these are our four mass-market hatchbacks. This is the Volkswagen Polo with its cutting-edge dual-clutch transmission, or as they call it, DSG. Then we have the Nissan Micra with its CVT, or the Continuously Variable Transmission, which is dubbed as the Extronic CVT. And then there is the Maruti Celerio with its AMT, or in Maruti speak, AGS, the Auto Gear Shift. And the car that we will start with is this, Honda's Brio. This nippy looking hatchback has a gearbox with a complicated and intricate design. And that makes things a little difficult for a cost-conscious car like this. Well, because this gearbox is very conventional, it's a 5-speed torque converter, it's quite a bit heavier than the manual transmission car. It's around 40 kilos more and it saps a lot of power from the engine. But while driving it right now, you know the 1.2i VTEC doesn't have a great bottom end. But this kind of masking it and giving you good drivability at part throttle. You put your foot down, well, it's not as brisk as you expect it to be, but it's not bad. You can drive quickly on the highway, I think, uh, with this as well. Well, Karthi, it might be peppy, but it sips quite a bit of fuel compared to the manual transmission car. The Brio Automatic returns nearly 3 kilometers per liter less than the manual. A more modern gearbox could fix things. But that would complicate matters further. What's the pricing like? It's around 77,000 more than the manual transmission. Wow, that's quite expensive. Yes, it is. But if the price tag is your main concern, then look no further than Maruti Suzuki's new Celerio AMT. AMT or the Automated Manual Transmission. It is exactly what the name suggests. So the AMT is a really interesting system. It's basically what's called a robotized manual. Lamborghini use it for their Aventador. So essentially what the Celerio has is the same gearbox as the regular manual transmission car. But instead of you having to operate the clutch pedal or the gear lever, you have motors doing that task. And you are at the wheel of it, so what's it feeling like? Uh, well, Karthik, the gearbox works really well in manual mode. You can control which gear you want to be in. You can be at the meat of the power band. If the progress then is really good. But the problem starts as soon as you shift the lever in T. Because especially when you slow down and when you have to go back on the path. It's so typical city Yeah, driving. basically the clutch disengages. And when you go back on the path, it engages again and there's a jerk. But in the Celerio's defense, we had the exact same thing to say about the Aventador when we tested it in 2012. The single clutch gearbox is a bit jarring, it doesn't feel as smooth obviously as the dual clutches as we are used to now. It actually feels a bit lumpy when you're cruising around at low speeds and if you put it in Corsa mode, it can feel really quite aggressive. Lamborghini can call it emotional as much as they want but it does feel a bit rough edged. Coming back to the utilitarian Celerio, the jerky changes is because of an important target. So I think it's because I, I also found it when I was driving, it's every time you go off the gas, it's moving to a yes. higher gear for yes. just for fuel efficiency. So when you go back, you have to kind of wait for the wait part. for the power to come in, and the shifts are very slow, which is very irritating on the highway. But at the end of the day, it gives you a convenience of an automatic gearbox, especially in the city. So you can work around it, you can try and be a little smoother. It's, you know? it's not a deal breaker. Yeah. Neither is the fact that unlike other automatics, there is no parking mode here. So when you stop the car, you will have to use the handbrake. Plus, uh, the price difference is much. Celerio AMT costs about 44,000 rupees more than the manual transmission, which is really quite reasonable. But that's not all. What Maruti have aimed for is great fuel efficiency and they've got that. And that's not all. The Celerio AMT delivers the same fuel efficiency as the manual. A company claimed 
23.1 kilometers per liter. But now there are gearboxes that offer even greater fuel efficiency than manual cars. Thanks to the CVT transmission in this car, Nissan claim that this car gives more efficiency than a manual transmission car. How surprising is that? The technology that makes this possible is the continuously variable transmission. The cool thing about the CVT is that it uses two pulleys and a metal belt to create an infinite number of ratios. As a result, you have the most efficient ratio for just about every situation. So it's no surprise that while the manual Micra returns 18.4 km per litre, the CVT returns a solid 19.34 km per litre. And it isn't too bad to drive either. In the city, I found that it's giving you great drivability for stop-go conditions, for you know, light flowing traffic. It's giving you good responsiveness. But Karthik, what about the highway? I think it's not that capable, you know? Yeah, when you flat foot it, that's when you feel that famous rubber band effect that CVTs are actually yeah. infamous for. If you're looking for something sporty and exciting, then look no further than the dual clutch gearbox that's offered on Volkswagen's Polo GTTSI. So it's really incredible you have a twin clutch gearbox which we've seen on supercars, on luxury cars, but is now offered on a hatchback. That's the thing, Karthik, because it's one thing to have a very strong engine, which it does. It's got a turbocharged petrol engine, um, but the gearbox makes use of all this power and it puts it to very good use. The shifts are lightning quick and the surge which you get, it's just so addictive that it's so much fun to drive. It's pretty seamless, right? Again, no yes. brake and power talk. Yes. And quick, quick acceleration. Yes, that's right. But I mean, are you sacrificing practicality then? Um, I don't think so because unlike most of DSGs, this doesn't feel that jerky at low speeds. And plus, the biggest plus point of this DSG is it will give you good efficiency. That's provided you drive easy, right? Ah, uh, yeah, which is very difficult in this car. <laughs> Like we've seen with the other cars, like you can get two things but not all three in the sense on the AMT you get great efficiency, great price but not the most refined mechanicals in that sense. So you have a brilliant mechanical setup here, you have great performance and it's refined yeah. but it's expensive. Very expensive but that's the thing, you always have a price to pay for good things. Enjoy it I guess if you can yeah. afford it. <laughs> But bear in mind, the DCD is expensive to buy and it will also be expensive to maintain when things go wrong. So there we go, automatic gearboxes have moved forward and they are coming closer and closer to manual gearboxes in terms of price, performance and cost of running. And the best part is, until we get one perfect automatic gearbox, this wide range of technologies is accessible to every car buyer in the country today. So, which automatic gearbox is the right one for you?